In June 2014, the Scottish Government presented the Scottish Parliament with a proposed law, the Community Empowerment Scotland Bill, aimed at making it easier for people to improve their communities. The Scottish Parliament gave the Local Government and Regeneration Committee, of which I am convener, the task of scrutinising much of the bill and identifying what would make it work. The first stage of this process, stage one, involved consulting people throughout Scotland. The committee has produced its findings and wants the bill to be even more robust in helping people through the maze of bureaucracy. We have highlighted the fact that top-down uh, uh, scenarios put in place by community planning partnerships are not necessarily the best thing and what we actually want is bottom-up uh, ideas and communication and that is why in the report itself we've talked about community planning partnerships and other public bodies uh, engaging much more with the public that they represent. In any uh, of the inquiries or reports that this committee has done of late, uh, what we have produced at the end of it is always much enhanced uh, when we have had a huge amount of public comment. I'm really pleased that we have been able to speak to so many people around the country and really pleased that so many folks have written uh, to the committee or have engaged with members of the committee to make uh, this stage one the best that it possibly can be. If there's one case which showed the benefits of positive public engagement, it was our experience with The Usual Place, a cafe with a specialised changing places toilet in Dumfries. These folks tried for three years to get a lease from the council for new premises in a local church. When we and the committee got involved, the council had some very difficult questions to answer. Now, as one of my committee colleagues, John Wilson, has discovered, the whole situation has been unlocked. The lease has been granted and work has finally started on this worthwhile community project. Uh, what was the attitude of officers following that meeting? We felt that there's communication problems within the council and we had fallen foul of some of those perhaps uh, and I think after the, the committee meeting things were a bit more focused and it all caught together a bit better and people seemed to move more on it. Everybody seemed to understand what we were doing and what the process had to be to get us to this stage. It was still a long process but we're here now and it's just terrific to be at this stage finally. Amy, when you gave evidence in front of the committee, do you think it was worthwhile giving? Definitely, oh, yeah, definitely. It'll give people profound difficulties, more confidence if they work here, you know, uh -huh. and that's what we're hoping to achieve anyway. So. Can I, on behalf of the committee, wish us all the best for the future? I think the evidence that you provided us with on the day clearly opened our eyes to some of the problems that are faced by many community groups throughout Scotland. But I'm glad that you've come from amateurs to being semi-professionals <laughs> and professionals in the field of community empowerment, because I think the example that you've given us today and the example that you're putting forward for Dumfries as examples that can be replicated throughout Scotland. Now I hope that uh, as well as uh, sorting out matters for one group uh, that uh, our findings uh, will help many others across the country uh, and that we can ensure that the legislation is robust enough uh, to take account uh, of, of matters which may have been difficult in the past. Hopefully we can iron all of that out now. This part of the process will conclude with the full Scottish Parliament debating the bill and our report before it can move on.